Imagine Nike without the swoosh, McDonald's with no golden arches, or Apple without the Apple. Trademarks and patents can make or break a company. Most of the inventions that power the modern world started out as an idea, which was eventually patented. Put the match in the lighter, and there you are. Over the past decade, there's been an explosion of claims from companies and inventors hoping to carve out their own slice of the digital age. We are on the cusp of truly and extraordinarily revolutionary technologies. Intellectual property is turning into a key battleground between the world's biggest economic powers. China now accounts for more than 10% of all trademark applications filed in the U.S. We now have a peer competitor in China and we are at a critical moment for the future of intellectual property. More than 14 million trademark applications were filed worldwide in 2018, up almost 160% from 2008. At the same time, patent applications have surged more than 70%. In the U.S. alone, intellectual property intensive industries contribute trillions of dollars to the economy every year. So what makes trademarks and patents so valuable? And why are the U.S. and China competing for them? Intellectual property, or IP, refers to patents, trademarks, and copyrights. Inventions, works of art, music lyrics, and logos are all examples of IP. Protection for intellectual property rights in the U.S. goes all the way back to the Constitution. In fact, in the body of the Constitution itself, the word right is actually mentioned only once, and it's with respect to intellectual property rights. Congress passed legislation laying the foundation for the patent system in 1790, and today the U.S. Patent and Trademark Office is located here in Virginia. The agency is part of the U.S. Commerce Department. Right here, for example, we see Thomas Edison uh, with the electric light bulb. Right under him, George Eastman. What the patent system does is to create a perpetual innovation machine, a pro-competitive system that forever creates more and more innovation. Patents are one category of intellectual property in the U.S. They give inventors exclusive rights for up to 20 years to make and sell a product that offers a new solution to a problem. Prescription drugs are a good example. Once a company's patent for a drug expires, competitors can copy and sell generics that include the same ingredients. You need an inventor to get a monopoly over their invention for a short period of time to recover the investment costs. The second category of IP is trademarks. Logos, slogans, and brand names for a company or individual are all trademarks. One of the most well-known trademarks comes from Coca-Cola. The soda maker trademarked its signature logo in 1893, and it has distinguished cans and bottles around the world ever since. Trademarks are used to establish standards for brands for consumers. So every time you buy a Coke, you know what taste and quality to expect. Trademarks, as long as you file periodic renewals and continue to sell your goods and services, will last forever. Then there are copyrights. They protect original works by authors or artists. Songs, photographs, or novels are all subject to copyright law. Copyrights protect works of art. So think of an entire movie. You can't just copy a movie and sell it. Um, that's why you see the big FBI warnings when you start a DVD. The U.S. Patent and Trademark Office has seen its fair share of quirky innovations, from Eddie Van Halen's guitar support system to Bill Nye's improved ballet point shoe. Anyone who has an idea for an invention, except for employees of the Patent and Trademark Office, can file an application for a patent. Unlike trademarks, you don't even have to show that you're selling the product. One of the main points of the patent system is to encourage innovation from those who otherwise wouldn't do it. For many entrepreneurs, investors, and businesses, patents and trademarks are the lifeblood of innovation. They can help turn an idea into reality and generate millions of dollars in returns. Mark Zosky is the CEO of Seattle-based gourmet salt company Saltworks. The company holds more than 60 trademarks. You have the people and you have your product, your suppliers, but then you have your trademarks, which are your territory in that space. In the salt space, it is everything. Salt was such a commodity that we really wanted ours to be above a commodity. So we started with name brands so that instead of just promoting the sea salt industry, we were promoting our sea salt. Zosky says the trademarks have helped boost brand loyalty and fend off imitators. The smaller the company are, the more important that a trademark is. Because if you really catch fire with something, that's the only thing that's going to differentiate you from someone that has a lot of money that can put out a nearly identical product.
The U.S. Commerce Department estimates IP-intensive industries generated $6.6 trillion in value in 2014, more than one-third of U.S. GDP. That number is likely to go up in coming years. Trademark applications in the U.S. have roughly doubled over the past decade as companies place growing importance on their brands and move sales online. There's been a huge change in trademark registration in the last 10 years because of Amazon and Facebook and all the internet commerce that's going on. In 2008, there was just around 250,000 U.S. trademark applications filed. In 2019, there was over 450,000. The digital economy has also contributed to a surge in patent applications, especially in fields like computer technology. In 2018, more than 600,000 patent applications were filed in the U.S., compared to around 260,000 two decades earlier. There's now a backlog of more than 500,000 applications at the Patent Office. It took 125 years to issue 1 million patents, and it only took 5 years to issue the last million patents. That tells you a little bit about the speed of innovation in the United States. Many of today's biggest innovations are in the form of software, machine learning, or artificial intelligence, instead of tangible, physical objects. This can make evaluating patents harder. We want to make sure that there are actual, practical inventions that have a technical character to them. Tech companies are capitalizing on intellectual property rights for computers, smart devices, and software. California-based chipmaker Qualcomm, for example, generates a large portion of its sales by licensing patents. Tech giants like IBM, Samsung, Microsoft, and Apple apply for thousands of patents every year. Patents have the ability to play a, a vital role in uh, the economy and in innovation, uh, but that, that bad patents can also do huge amount of damage. Some people, companies, and even countries are trying to stretch the legal limits when it comes to cashing in on IP. The rise of fraudulent trademarks is one concern among lawmakers in Washington. The U.S. Trademark Register has been inundated with applications in recent years, with many coming from China. The significant concern here is that a lot of these applications are fraudulent, meaning that they're making claims that there's actually being goods or services sold under the trademarks in the United States when in fact there are not. They are essentially photoshopping uh, digital photographs that they get off uh, the internet, um, submitting these to the PTO saying, here's evidence of our use in commerce. Barton Beebe, a law professor at NYU, testified about the growing number of fraudulent Chinese trademark applications in the U.S. in a hearing last year in front of the Senate Judiciary Subcommittee on Intellectual Property. Beebe estimates about 67% of the trademark applications from China in the apparel goods category in 2017 were fraudulent, meaning they didn't correspond with a real brand. The problem, he says, is that these applications are clogging up the system. We have clients that have had trademark applications denied because of these fraudulent re registrations, and we've had to take additional steps, which typically cost thousands of dollars, to remove those fraudulent registrations from the U.S. Trademark Register. The U.S. Patent and Trademark Office implemented a new rule in August 2019 that required any foreign company registering for a trademark to use a U.S. licensed attorney. The agency says those steps have helped reduce the number of fraudulent filings from China. Legislation is also on the table. Senator Chris Coons is co-chair of the Congressional Trademark Caucus. There are some compelling initial proposals about how to deal with the clouding of the trademark registry, but I think we need to take more um, active measures. China's push for trademarks in the U.S. is just one example of a bigger fight over IP between the world's two biggest economies. As part of China's rapid economic development, the government has pursued policies like forced technology transfers, which require foreign companies to share their technology, often in the form of IP, in order to get access to the Chinese market. What that really means is we'll give you five or ten years to sell your product to our more than billion consumers, but ten or twenty years from now, that technology is going to be manufactured here by our companies and then exported to the rest of the world. Many American business leaders warn policies like forced technology transfers have resulted in IP theft, posing a major risk to business. A 2017 report by the IP Commission estimated IP theft from China and other countries cost the U.S. economy between $225 billion and $600 billion per year. Basically what's happened over the last at least 30 years uh, is one of the single greatest transfers of wealth from one country to another. The intellectual property theft that has occurred between the United States and China um, is historic in scale. 
That's why IP is a key sticking point in the trade war between the U.S. and China. The agreement we signed today includes groundbreaking provisions in an area of critical importance to the United States, protecting intellectual property. The Phase One trade agreement between the two countries pledged stronger protection against patent and trademark infringement, but how it will be enforced remains to be seen. Intellectual property theft has been a major source of contention between the United States and China, and really is the, the most important unresolved issue in our current trade dispute. Politicians, policymakers, academics, and investors say economic success will be determined by who owns and develops new technologies like artificial intelligence and 5G. China has made it no secret it aims to be the global leader in these technologies, and intellectual property is key to that goal. Of the more than 3 million patent applications filed worldwide in 2018, China accounted for roughly half. Its Made in China 2025 industrial policy funnels investment in areas like information technology and high-tech robots. Imagine if instead of Facebook, um, Amazon, and Google all being American companies with American headquarters and mostly American employees, if all of those companies and those technologies were Chinese-developed, Chinese-owned, Chinese-led, all that additional wealth and opportunity and influence on the world stage goes to China rather than the United States. That is exactly the competition that we are in the middle of right now.